What's good everyone on YouTube? It's me again, back with another video. And just like I warned in the last video, I'll probably be doing a lot more after wear reviews such as this. Um, I'm just not getting a lot of new shoes around these days. I'm trying to not buy many shoes these days. So I'll be talking more about things that I actually have experience in. And this particular shoe is probably one of my strangest shoes in my collection. Um, when most people think about Calvin Klein, or Kevin Klein for those who are cultured out there, uh, I have a feeling, at least for myself, I immediately think of the underwear. Uh, all those uh, underwear models with their sexy abs and whatnot. But, you know, there, there was a period of time where uh, Calvin Klein had this sort of high-end line. And from what I understand, it was supposed to be headed by Raph Simmons. And like, it has this really long name. Um, I won't read it out just yet because I don't remember it. It's on the shoe itself down here somewhere. But they came out with a pair of um, sort of high-end sneakers. And um, there was the uh, Strike 205s. The Strike 205s actually was a really cool, I feel like, chunky alternative to the Balenciaga Triple S. I thought it looked way better than the Triple S. And then uh, the shoe I have here today, which is the uh, Carlos 10. And um, they're very odd and um, I don't know why, for some reason I was really drawn to the Carlos 10. Um, I never picked up the Strike 205s, I wish I kinda uh, did, but uh, I'll explain as to why I didn't pick up that shoe in a while. Um, but without further ado, I'll just get on to showing you guys what the um, uh, Calvin Klein Carlos 10 looks like today. So here's my pair of Carlos 10s, and I've probably worn this, um, if I accumulate all the days that I've worn it, it's probably been about a month of wear on this shoe. Even though I've owned this shoe for much longer than a month, it probably only has about a month of wear on it. And as you can see, like, the toe box leather is, you know, fairly creased up. Um, we've got some yellowing happening on the laces, as well as this back piece. And then uh, the outsole itself um, seems to be holding up fairly okay. I mean, it's not exactly a performance outsole. And it's got some pretty bit stiff rubber around the um, outside parts. But then the black parts are actually the cushioning foam, which I actually think is quite soft, but I'll talk more about the, the advantages of that. And um, the actual uh, sort of subdivision of Calvin Klein, this was called, was Calvin Klein 205W 39NYC. And in this whole thing, they made all these like sort of designer S uh, clothing and shoes. And um, along with the designer S um, designs, we also get designer esque pricing. And um, this shoe, uh, I remember retailing for close to a thousand Australian dollars. I did not pay nearly close to that. But um, we'll start to, uh, talking about this shoe and its pros and cons right now. And starting off, uh, we'll go into the pros. You know, I am so running at the mouth of this right now. So my first pro for this shoe is actually going to be the underfoot comfort. So despite the fact this is sort of a high-end designer shoe that I guess not many people would consider uh, would consider comfort when buying, um, this shoe is surprisingly comfortable. So where you see the black um, in the sort of uh, midsole and outsole, it's actually this really soft um, foam. I can't really tell you exactly what compound it is, but underfoot it's actually quite soft to stand on and. After a full day of walking, I actually find that my feet feel pretty good afterwards. And it also comes with a fairly decent sort of insole that uh, sort of helps along with the comfort. So that would be my first pro for this shoe. The underfoot comfort is actually surprisingly top notch. My second pro for this shoe, just be the unique design of this shoe. So when you look at it, it's got this very sort of chunky uh, silhouette. And then, then these really interesting sort of details with like this, this sort of like teeth kind of outsole. Uh, this rubberized cap on the toe and most notably the sort of hat strap on the back and functionally it does absolutely nothing but sometimes we wear things because it looks cool and for some reason I think it looks quite nice I actually think it works really well with um, baggy pants because it tends to catch on this back piece so it doesn't completely cover the shoe um, so it really leaves opportunities for interesting styling for this shoe so that would be my second pro for this shoe. Just the interesting um, silhouette and styling of this shoe, I think is uh, quite unique and something you can't really find much these days. My third pro for this shoe would actually be the quality of materials on this shoe. So while there is sort of this neoprene lining that your foot is lined up against the whole time, the neoprene is actually quite nice to have against your skin. And then sort of 
on top of everything, we've got this fairly thin but very soft uh, leather. And I think the leather has broken in quite nicely and has this really nice sort of um, aged look to it now. And then the suede overlays is really nice and it has this very nice uh, hairy feeling towards it. And um, like I said before, the foam underneath, I don't know if it's the highest quality, but it definitely feels really good underfoot. So that would be my third pro for this shoe. The material quality I think is quite nice for this shoe. So that would be the first three pros. Let's get into the cons of this shoe and I can definitely list three cons without having to force them out. My first con for this shoe would actually be heel slippage. So like I said, the um, neoprene is quite nice and it feels good against your skin. But neoprene is always notorious for being quite slippery. And unless you crank down the laces of this shoe, um, you'll find that your heel will slide up and down quite a lot in this shoe. Um, that probably also has to uh, do with the fact that the shoe is so chunky, so it doesn't bend as much. But I find that I have to tie my, sh my shoes really tightly to make sure I don't slide against the back of the shoe. I really don't like heel slippage and it's something that always bothers me, so that would be my first call for this shoe. The heel slippage is just not really something I, um, I, want, I want in my shoe. My second con for this shoe would actually be the weight of the shoe. So while I mentioned that it is quite comfortable to stand around in, actually walking a long time with this shoe is, um, it's tiring not because of its underfoot comfort, but because of the sheer weight of this shoe. It's actually a fairly heavy shoe. It's probably similar to a pair of Tim's but it's a low cut shoe, so you definitely notice it's sort of like swinging around when you walk around with it. So you may find if you're someone who's not used to heavy shoes, this is something that you will notice, but that's kind of, so kind of par for the course for a lot of chunky shoes, but that's just something I wanted to mention. So that would be my second con for this shoe. The weight of this shoe is a little bit unnecessary and a little bit heavy and a little bit tiring and I'm running out of these little bits. Uh, my third con for this shoe, and it will be the biggest sticking point for this shoe um, had I bought it at the retail price, is it's just too damn expensive for a Calvin Klein shoe. So I know it's not really a fair thing to say, you know, uh, just because something is Gucci, it's immediately worth that thousand dollar price tag. But if I have to be honest, um, and I'm sure many people have this thought, if someone came up to you and asked you, would you buy a Calvin Klein shoe for $1,000? Most people would think you were insane if you were trying to sell that. And that's pretty much what they were doing here. Um, when this shoe first hit the market, they were saying this was a Calvin Klein shoe for $1,000 if you want it. And for that price tag, I just think it's completely unnecessary and it's just not really in line with Calvin Klein's um, rest of like the like product line. So I think that's why eventually a lot of these shoes ended up going on really deep discount. I mean, I ended up paying, I think closer to like 300 Australian dollars for these, which still is quite expensive for a shoe, don't get me wrong, but it's a far cry from a thousand dollars. And um, you know, the reason I don't didn't end up buying the Strike 205s was I was waiting for them to go on sale. They ended up dropping, I think close to like $200. But at that price point, a lot of people did buy them and they ended up selling out before I had a chance to buy them. And uh, I, if anyone happens to have a pair of um, Strike 205s in a size 9, uh, let me know because I definitely would like to uh, buy that. But that would be my third uh, con for this shoe. This shoe is just way too expensive for what it is. And um, But in saying that, if you can buy these on sale, I definitely would just sort of jump on the opportunity if it goes down deep um, enough into discounts. So three pros and three cons, we did it. And um, you know, just sort of finishing off with my opinions of this shoe. Um, I definitely think it's one of my most unique shoes that I have in my collection. And I find myself, I've worn this quite a few times, you know, in the month that I've like, you know, worn it here and there. And um, it's definitely a shoe that I've gotten quite a few comments about. Cause people ask me, you know, what kind of shoe is this? Like they, they always find this strap always a bit weird. Um, and they're always surprised when I mention it's a Calvin Klein shoe. I never tell them what the original price was because most people wouldn't believe me. But I definitely think it's a unique shoe that I'm happy to have in my collection. And um, I probably can never sell this shoe because if I even ask for a hundred bucks for a Calvin Klein shoe, I'm sure no one would buy it off me. So this is one I'm permanently stuck with, but I'm a happy owner of this shoe. So with that, we've come to the end of another video. So I'd love to hear what you guys think of this Carlos 10. And um, if any of you happen to own the Carlos 10, I'd love to hear what you guys think about the shoe and any of your pros and cons. 
Um, so like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. And if you're into more dance, sneakers, vlogs, that sort of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna end the video there and I'll catch you guys in another video. As you can clearly tell, I have not been on camera in a while. Oh.